Today we're going to be going through and I'm going to show you how to do the filter function in Excel. Now, if you're anything like me, the first time you see the filter function, you might be thinking, because obviously in Excel, you can go to the data tab, you can click filter and you can filter through your data like this, but there are actually some clear advantages to the filter function. For one, you can take the data that filters out and you can present it on a separate tab. This is cool because it's only going to show exactly what you want to show in a separate location, which brings me into the second advantage, which is that it updates live. You know, when you're filtering out something in Excel, like for example, I'm getting rid of the milk here. I go to the very bottom, I type in milk, but it stays in place until I refresh the filter. Well, with the filter function, you don't need to worry about this. If you add any data, it automatically updates where the function displays. Now let's get into it. It's super simple. In my example here, I've got an item name, the quantity sold, and then the type of item that was sold. And for this example, let's just try to have the filter function filter out all the different drinks that are fruit type. So I want to find fruit type right here. The syntax for the filter function is pretty straightforward. You just need to go ahead and type equals filter with an open parentheses. And then it brings us to the first argument that's needed, which is the array. Now what the array means is what's the total area that you want Excel to return. In this example, when we find the fruit drink, ultimately, I want it to return both the item name, the quantity and the type that it is. I essentially want it to return everything on this table. So what we need to do here is we just need to highlight from A2 down to the bottom over here, which is C50, it looks like. Once that area is highlighted, we can go ahead and we can click comma. The second argument that the filter function has is this include area right here. The first part of the include argument, we need to highlight the area that the filtered parameter is going to be found in. So in this example, we want to highlight the area in column C because we know that's where we're going to filter from. Once it's highlighted like this, we can type equals and we want the filter function to be looking for fruit, which I typed up in G2. So I'm going to say C2 through C50 equals fruit because I want it to return the values that correspond with fruit. I'm going to type comma. And because this last argument, the if empty is in brackets, we know it's optional, but this essentially is just Excel saying, what do you want me to return if I don't find anything? So in quotations, I'm just going to type no value found. I'm going to close the parentheses and then click enter. And you can see that Excel has returned all of the data that corresponds to fruit. We can of course test that this is working and I can switch this to milk. And when I click enter, you can see what would be, you know, column C over here, which corresponds with I, it's returning all of the different columns that correspond with milk. Now, just to take this a step further, let's say that I type in orange drink here, because I'm thinking in column A, it should find orange drink and then return all of these different values. But when I click enter, it says no value found. And the reason for that is because in our formula, we specify to look for that value in column C. So when it looks in column C, it's not finding orange drink anywhere. In order to get this to work, we would need to switch this central area, the central argument here from C's to A's and then click enter. And you can see now it's returning all of the different areas with orange drink. And that's about all there is to know about the filter function in Excel. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching.